Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. The weather has been getting better in Montreal with waning heat and humidity in the last few days. I hope you will make the most of the nice weather in your country as well. Today, I will introduce in detail the Xingyi Aid Word, a topic that I briefly introduced in a prior video. It is an advanced practice in Hebei style Xingyi, but first, time to get high on tea. This week's tea is Lao Wulong Cha, Old Wulong Tea. I have introduced some other types of oolong teas before, such as Tie Guan Yan, Da Hong Pao, Feng Huang Dan Cong, and Lang Wei Ren, a newly invented tea. First, I would like to talk about the processing method for oolong tea so you will understand what oolong tea is all about. Mere knowledge of tea names without understanding the processing method is superficial knowledge, like talking about a martial arts style without practicing the style. So, today we will focus on deep baked oolong tea, an important but not so well known category of oolong tea. As with other type of teas, there are different criteria used to categorize oolong tea, including geographic location, the shape of the tea leaf, and the fermentation level. The term fermentation level here does not mean the involvement of uh, microorganisms, but rather indicates the overall processing method, especially the baking process. We all know that oolong tea leaves have to be heat precise in order to generate different types of flavors. So, the level of heat and length of baking time is criteria to differentiate oolong tea into different categories, including qing xiang xing, clear fragrance type, and nong xiang xing strong fragrance type. Here, clear fragrance as opposite to strong fragrance does not mean weak fragrance. Clear fragrance means the overall tea flavor. Nong xiang xing or strong fragrance type uses the traditional processing method, while qing xiang xing or clear fragrance type is a new invention. So, old oolong tea or lao oolong cha is oolong tea produced using the strong fragrance processing method, especially a specific baking process in order to generate specific strong fragrances. Baking technology used in processing oolong tea is the key step that can affect the quality of oolong tea. Since we are talking about old oolong tea, I will focus on its specific baking process. Research shows that during the high temperature baking process, abigalocatecin gallate or EGCG gets converted to EGC or abigalocatecin and gallic acid at a higher rate compared to lower temperatures, which can offer more health benefits. At the same time, other chemicals in the tea leaves will react with each other to generate new flavors in the process. Baking temperature can vary from 80 degrees to 130 degrees Celsius or even higher. The baking time can also affect the generation of different tea fragrances. So, the baking time for Nong Xiang Xing or strong fragrance oolong tea can vary from 4 to 24 hours or even longer. Also, tea manufacturers may bake the tea multiple times depending on the type of tea. Again, tea manufacturers 
vary the temperature and the length of baking time to manipulate the fragrance. So, if the Wulong tea production process uses high temperature and long baking time, it is called Hong Bei Wulong or Baked Wulong. If this tea is processed with the invention of preserving it for multiple years to generate better flavor, it is called Wulong Lao Cha or Wulong Old Tea. Of course, there are different names and different categorization methods. I am only introducing the most popular method in defining this name. Normally, strong fragrance Wulong Tea, especially old Wulong Tea, is for people who really appreciate tea. I have a different types of uh, old Wulong at home. Let me show you a very typical old Wulong tea. This one is from Ali Shan, Taiwan. This is an old baked Wulong. Let me show you the leaf. You can see that the darker color caused by the fermentation process, especially long hours of baking at high temperature. This is the color of a tea decoction. Strong fragrance, strong texture, and rich flavor. I have had this for years and I bake it by myself once a year to improve the quality of this tea. This is a very special and expensive tea. I only drink it when friends who know tea very well. Remember, old Wulong tea is not a specific tea, but a category of tea. Do let me know your experience with Nong Xiang Xing or Strong Fragrance Wulong Tea in the comments. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, 8 Word Practice of Xing Yi. Topic covers in today's video include first, Power versus Technique. Second, Xing Yi and eight, 8 words. Third, practice of 8 words. Fourth, misperception of 8 words. Fifth, demonstration. Sixth, correction of a student's practice. And seventh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Power versus Technique. As emphasized countless time before, Xing Yi is a style focused on power releasing practice. In other words, Xing Yi is the Fa Jin based style. Any martial technique in Xing Yi is based on power training. Without Xing Yi power, one's practice cannot be considered Xing Yi. If someone mainly focuses on technique in Xing Yi training, that is an incorrect way to practice this style. This is why traditionally, Xing Yi practitioners focus on 5 element training first and then move on to 12 animal forms since 5 element training aims for the practice of 5 types of Xing Yi power, while 12 animal forms training aims for the practice of 12 categories of martial techniques. And uh, five element training comes before twelve animal training since it helps a practitioner build a strong foundation, which is Fa Jin or force releasing practice. Different levels of Fa Jin training provide different levels of benefits. At an advanced level, Fa Jin should be naturally and subconsciously executed without preparation in practice, which is a standard of a training. Anyone who lacks this level should focus more on 5 element training in order to master and grasp the spirit of Xing Yi, or else what that person is performing is simply not Xing Yi or modern Wu Shu Xing Yi at the most. 
simply calling your practice traditional does not make it traditional. So I recommend you focus on power training. If you realize that you have a hard time mastering fighting even after years of training, most likely your practice method is wrong. So choose your training program wisely. At the very least, you should focus on power training when you practice Xing Yi. As an aside, I'd like to point out an unfortunate situation in the current general Xing Yi practice in the community. For the last couple of decades, Xing Yi practice has been morphing for the worse into a style containing some fancy movements instead of Xing Yi power. In that process, many important traditional concepts and theories have been misperceived and misinterpreted by the community, resulting in an overall lack of martial power in Xing Yi practice due to the poor body method of Shen Fa training. All of these unfortunate trends should be avoided and corrected at the earliest. Second, Xing Yi and its eight words. Hebei style Xing Yi include a famous practice, Ba Zi Gong or eight word practice. Ba means eight, Zi means word, and Gong means practice or training. Eight word practice or Ba Zi Gong is a traditional but Unfortunately, not a popular practice in the community. There are many reasons for this situation. For example, eight word is an advanced practice typically taught after mastering 12 animals and many other routines, including both bare hands and weapons. So many people would just focus on already learned materials instead of learning Ba Zi Gong. In the old days, many teachers taught this practice only to some important students, not to everyone. As a result, this advanced practice has never been widely popular. Regardless, it is an important part of the Xing Yi system and deserves wider attention from the community. Some community members asked me about it in the Q&A video to which I had only provided a brief answer. It's time to get into the details today. So, what is Ba Zi Gong? It is the traditional Xing Yi practice that focuses on martial application. Like most other practices, Ba Zi Gong also has different origin stories. To the best of my knowledge, which included consulting with many older generation Xing Yi practitioners, the Eight World Practice was invented by Li Cun Yi. Li Cun Yi, part of the second generation of Xing Yi disciples, or the third generation of Xing Yi practitioners, was one of the most important disseminators of that style around the end of the 19th century and the early 20th century. In Tianjin, he created the Eight World Practice and taught it to many of his disciples. It was only practiced in the Hebei style in the beginning but now may have been adopted by other branches of Xing Yi as well. The eight words are Zhan Jie Guo Kua Tiao Ding Yun Ling. Zhan means chopping, close to Pi Quan or Metal Fist. Jie means blocking, close to Zuan Quan or Water Fist. Guo means containing or packing, close to Heng Quan or Earth Fist. Kua means stepping, close to Beng Quan or Wood Fist. Tiao means upward striking, Ding means 
going against. He lost to Pao Quan or Fire Fist. Yun means turning, and Lin means leading. Bear in mind that each of these words can have multiple meanings. In the video, I have only introduced the most important meanings of each word. According to Li Cunyi, the eight word practice serves two purposes power training and martial application. So, for power training, the eight words represents eight types of power practiced through single exercises and small routines. The training benefits of martial techniques are achieved through eight routines, which are combination of five elements and twelve animals with some variations of movements, postures, forces, focuses, and so on. So, Short routines or single movement exercises for power training, while longer routines are for martial application training. The eight word practice also includes a linking form. Very often, people simply integrate these eight small routines together and remove some repetitions. So, generations after Li Cunyi created different versions of the eight word linking form, mostly similar to each other. I have taught the eight word practice to some of my students in Montreal. I like this practice very much and so do my students. So, how should you actually practice the Xing Yi eight words? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. Practice of 8 Word In Topic 1 of this video, I talked about the relationship between power and technique. I emphasized that Xing Yi is a power release of Fa Jin based style, and any Xing Yi martial application and technique is based on power release. This is what has made Xing Yi popular and practical in Chinese martial art history. Eight word practice has a unique approach to power and technique, which will be discussed later in this section. To practice the eight word, the main objectives, power and martial techniques, should not be forgotten. Remember, Xing Yi is not based on any fancy movements, but on its unique and powerful Fa Jin or power releasing practice. This is the most important aspect of practicing the eight word, no matter the short single exercises or complex routines. More importantly, when practicing the eight words, Shen Fa or Body method training should be the priority, since the body method is the foundation and the prerequisite of any Fa Jin. Fa Jin's result is based on the correct body method, or else the power would mainly rely on the limbs, which is not at all a practice of internal styles. So, if you have a hard time mastering the power training of 8 words, you should focus on your Shen Fa or body method. There are different body methods in the internal styles, especially in Xing Yi. The 8 words is an advanced practice and its body method should reflect it. Or else, there won't be any difference between it and the other practices such as five elements and the twelve animal training. The body method used in eight word training should be very dynamic and flexible, different from the prior training approach. That's why we say the eight word is an advanced practice. The advanced body method makes the eight word practice unique and challenging to master. 
Bear this in mind and practice your body method when working on eight words. To practice the eight word, you should first focus on single movement training. These single movements reflect the core power training of this practice. Do not add any fancy movements to single movements in order to master the Xingyi power offered by the eight words, or else your training will lose its purpose. After you master the basic power releasing practice of the eight word, you should progress to practice the eight sets of small routines in order to integrate each of the eight powers with the eight set of specific movements. At this stage, you should pay attention to the applications of each movement of these eight sets of small routines. Apply power to these movements, and also use the power practice to improve upon the applications of the movements. It sounds a bit strange since very often practitioners need to gain power through practice, but not at this stage, which is a unique approach in the advanced stage of Xing Yi practice. Do not forget this point. Topic 4 Misperceptions of 8 Words Eight words training, even though very rare in the Xing Yi community, can still be confused and misperceived by many practitioners. And not only the eight word, but any advanced content of Xing Yi may also be prone to misperception. I'd like to point out one of the most prevalent misperceptions today. Many people are under the impression that as long as you know the movements of the eight word, your Xing Yi practice would reach an advanced level since you have practiced the advanced materials. This is a misperception, a very big one. You have to keep in mind that knowing and practicing advanced materials such as movements and routines of the eight word does not automatically elevate your practice to an advanced level. There are many criteria to evaluate the level of practice. In other words, it is not the mere knowledge of movements, but the quality of execution of these movements that determines the level of your practice. Quality of execution is the operative term. The right shenfa or body method is the key factor in judging the right power achieved through the practice of an eight word, not the other way around. So, even if someone may have practiced some movements and routines of the eight word without the expected fa jin or shen fa, their practice would still be considered a lower level practice. Remember, quality over quantity. I teach eight word movements to my students of all levels, with the reminder that they are just learning the movements. I help them practice power release exercises and also ensure their body method is correct so that they will be able to release power naturally through practice. I also provide regular feedback on their quality of practice in terms of single movement level, routine level, power release level, or even more advanced levels. With time, my students understand that knowing and practicing some movements is merely the beginning and that there's a long way to go. That is the spirit of any internal style of martial art. I recommend not starting eight-word practice in the very early stages of your practice. 
My observation is that you should first master the five elements, twelve animals, and many other practices, including Xing Yi weapons, and only then move on to the eight word practice. Or else, the eight word practice will not help you much. This approach can be applied to other advanced practices of Xing Yi as well. Now, let's look at an eight word demonstration on the next topic. Topic 5 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a movement of eight word practice. Feel free to imitate this one and try to integrate it into your practice. Even more so if you already know the basic Xing Yi content. So, let me demonstrate one of the eight word, Ding. Okay, Ding. So, from here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Topic 6 Correction of a Student's Practice. Okay, let my student demonstrate one of the eight words. It is the Tiao or Upward Striking Movement. Then I correct his uh, practice. Slowly. Mm, that's good. All right. Continue. All right. Four. Okay, then you can close. Very nice. Just here. Here's here's be perfect. So uh, let's start from this poster. First of all, it's to, to the eighth word we we should extend the body more. Then first movement, one is the palm upward, then move inward. One, yes, but the, in, the fingers still point forward, upward. Not so much, yes, like, yes, because I make it here strong. One, two, continue, two, yes, continue, two. Then today's this movement, here, overhead, and uh, focus at this area, finger point upward in order to strengthen the palm. And, uh, here, do not point to that direction. Finger point to here, because then prepare for nice one. But before you strike, make sure the foot already in the right place, ready. Then slide a little bit. Then like this. Right again. So let's repeat from here. One, two. Right. Then this movement. Yes. Then upward. Then continue. And from here. From here. Okay. Then. Foot forward, then fall. Fall, focus here, over the head directly, and the body steadily leans forward. The this area extend backward. Yes, and the back leg have more strength. So again, face to here. Yes. Yes. Right. Be careful, keep more space from the elbow to the body. Okay, that's very important. Otherwise, you won't have a Xing Yi force. You just have a earth warm force. Okay, don't laugh. Why do you laugh? So one, two, three, four. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Topic seven: Takeaways. This video is not aimed at actually teaching the entire eight word practice, but rather at introducing some important practical concepts, such as the relationship between power and techniques. Integrating power and martial techniques in different approaches by prioritizing different practices at different stages and so on. First, Xing Yi is a Fa Jin based style. Any martial techniques in Xing Yi is based on Xing Yi power training. Second, the eight word practice was created by Li Cun Yi, one of the most important disseminators of Xing Yi in history. Third, the eight words are Zhan or chopping, Jie or blocking, Guo are containing or packing, Kua or stepping. Tiao o upward striking, ding o going against, yun o turning, and ling o leading. Fourth, 
power releasing and the martial techniques are both important eight word practices. You should first focus on single movement training for practicing power release and then practice the eight sets of small routines in order to integrate each of the eight powers with the eight sets of specific movements. Fifth, many people are under the impression that as long as you know the movements of eight words, your Xing Yi practice would reach an advanced level since you have practiced the advanced materials. Remember, that is a total misperception. It is the quality of execution of a movement and not the mere knowledge of a movement that determines the level of practice. Make sure to check out the demonstration and the student correction sections to get a more visual idea of the eight word practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.